God is higher than the heavens, closer than a brother, and more loving than any human mother. That is the God of reality. That is the God of grace. That is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Often, we do not feel that way about God. The ways and thoughts that we put on God are different than the ways and thoughts that He has and reveals to us. By speculation and by nature, we tend to think wrongly of God. We cast Him in a different image than what He has revealed to us in sacred scripture. But because of God's word, for the sake of Jesus Christ, who is God come into the world, God has revealed himself to us in the person and work of his son. And we now know what God looks like because of Jesus Christ, who gives to us grace and truth and the correct image of the living God. Blessedly, God is accessible to us in the word proclaimed in the word made flesh, in the word of forgiveness in the sacraments, we have messianic markers to guide us in our journey here on earth that our joy might be full, that our comfort might be great, and that we might have our eyes calibrated on heaven in the presence of God, even in time and space through his means of grace. Rather than speculate about God, God tells us wonderful things about his love his forgiveness for us, and a glorious future for us. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. I have a friend who is now in heaven. When he was here on earth, he was a brilliant scientist and a humble Christian. Had an IQ of about 165, not too shabby. And this brilliant man liked to say over and over again throughout life, the most intelligent man or woman on the face of this earth has an IQ like a chicken compared to God. God's ways are not our ways. God's thoughts are not our thoughts unless the Holy Spirit reveals them to us through His Son, God's Son, the Righteous One, Jesus. Humans are forever trying to put God in a little box. And there's a reason we want to do that. If we can put God in a little box and we can be God. And throughout history, what has happened is that people try to put God in a little box and they create all these little gods. And we make God rinky dink because that's the way we think we can manipulate God, that we can in turn become God. Now that's one extreme, and many, many, many religions run that way polytheism galore. Then there's the opposite extreme where people have a religion where God is just some big blob, some big, massive, big God. And you don't know if he loves you. You don't know if he cares for you. He, quote, fills the whole universe, but he's done nothing on planet Earth to bring any kind of birth and joy and hope and happiness and victory over death. Christianity avoids both of these extremes. Christianity is so unique. Uh, we don't celebrate that as much as we should. It's the only religion of salvation by grace alone. It is the only religion that reveals that God really loves us through Christ's death on the cross. It's the only religion that has a cure for death. And it's the only religion that teaches that God fills the whole universe and yet he is up close and personal in Jesus Christ, in your life, in my life. Christianity offers a mammoth picture of God on the one hand, and an up close and personal picture of God on the other hand. 
At the same time, Jesus dwells in our heart. He really, really does. As God and man, there isn't an inch in the universe where Jesus Christ is not present as God and man. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. How high is high? Well, imagine strapping yourself in a space craft, putting yourself on a booster rocket launcher, and going high up into the air. And all of a sudden you get higher and higher and higher and higher, and then finally you find yourself outside the atmosphere of planet Earth, and you're not going higher, but you're just going farther and farther. And maybe you go beyond Mars, and then maybe you go beyond Jupiter, and then you go beyond planet Pluto, Wherever you might be, if you were able to do something like that, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, would be by your side. The one who for you died, who was crucified to reveal God's spectacular love. He fills the whole universe. The one who loved you, who died for you, who was born of the Virgin Mary, who gives you his very body and blood in the Lord's Supper, forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation is by your side. The Old Testament thoroughly teaches that we are saved by God's grace alone, that God does abundantly pardon, as we heard before, freely forgives, same gospel in the Old Testament as in the New Testament, and it wrestles with this thought throughout there, who is a God like our God, who is seated on high, who looks down on the heavens and earth? Psalm 113, 5 and 6. And 2 Chronicles 6, 18. But will God indeed dwell with man on earth? Behold, heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you. How much less this house, said Solomon, that I built. But here's the good news. The God who fills this whole universe in love, in Christ, dwells within you and me and makes our body this temple, Jesus Christ. Paul uses this language, especially in baptism. In baptism, we have actually been buried into the death of Jesus. In baptism, we are actually buried into his resurrection. Paul says, when he wrote to the Galatians, I have been crucified with Christ in baptism. And it is no longer I who live, but it is Jesus Christ who lives in me to make me a new creation. So the God who fills the whole universe, in terms of his presence, dwells within us in love in Christ. If a person were to take that truth at face value, literally, and think upon it constantly, it would change our whole life dramatically. An awareness that Jesus not only fills the whole universe, but dwells in fellow believers, allows us to sense the divine drama that is taking place on earth beyond all the madness and moronic things we see. We see a bigger picture, a better picture, a glorious picture through Christ Jesus our Lord. This God who is far above the heavens, as the heavens are higher than the earth, became one of us. He humbled himself deeply to death on the cross. And this God now dwells within us to have compassion on us, abundantly pardon us, and to speak to us through his strong word that cleaved the darkness. If Christians can grasp that God is ever abundantly pardoning us, if we ever get an idea on this, not only will it keep us from being on our high horse, and judging harshly, but that same abundant pardon and love will bring us to Christ's love and the cross and move us to newness of life to perform all kinds of wonderful deeds, our love for the Savior and thanksgiving for the gift of salvation. God is higher in the heavens, closer than a brother, more loving than any mother. This is the God of reality. This is the God of grace. This is the God who took our place on the cross. He fills the whole universe, abundantly forgives, 
and tabernacles within your body. Be of good cheer. He is omnipresent and near. This is clear through holy baptism. And the peace of God that passes all understanding may guard and keep your hearts and minds in the only Savior of sinners and victor over death, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.